Kia ora, I'm Elizabeth Kerekere. We're here in the beautiful Te Poho Rawiri. This is Ngati One One. We are midway, nearly midway, between the restoration of our tukutuku and our whakairo. So those are all of our woven panels and our carvings. For the tukutuku panel, it's a three-stage process. We start off with the dry vacuum. We use tiny little brushes uh, to clean. Then we do a wet clean uh, with a really gentle, gentle detergent and then we go through and we do all of the repairs in the tukutuku because much as these are incredible artworks, uh, they're also, it's a living whare, it's a living house and so people will come and they will touch and that's part of that thing of wanting to connect with the whare, but over time it causes damage. And so we wanted to make sure we repaired uh, all of the ones. Some of them we can do that on the wall where it's not too much, but some of them and these ones you can see behind me, uh, we've had to take several off the wall and completely reweave whole sections of them. Uh, so of course all the prep that's needed for that. And that's just the tukutuku. Uh, with the carvings, we have again a dry clean, then a wet clean. Uh, we're going to do a focus on the eyes. So there's been some damaged power shells uh, that have occurred over the years. And so we're removing all the damaged ones, we're cleaning all the ones we have. And so come the opening, this whare is going to shine uh, like it probably has not done since it was opened. So we welcome uh, anyone in the whānau to come in and support and be part of this project. We've not called it a working bee. Uh, we've had certain weekends we've called them wānanga, uh, and that means a, a, a place of intensive learning and intensive work. Obviously we train people whenever they come in. Some things are a bit counterintuitive. People think, oh, this is the way we clean, but actually we are preserving something. We want this whare to be standing here in pristine uh, order in a hundred years. So our, to our mokopuna and their mokopuna can still come into this whare. Uh, so when people come, yes, they're trained. We have all the gears, all the materials here. And when people have got snatches of time. So in the first month, we were here every single night and every weekend. One of the amazing things is we have our aunties come in. We have the ones of my generation, but we have our nieces and their kids. So it's really amazing to watch a group of young children in there going hard out with their parents. They've got their headlamps on, they've got their tiny brushes and their cloths, and they're actually working. And while we work, we're talking about the whare, we're talking about the stories uh, behind the tukutuku and the whakairo, we're talking about the tūpuna, uh, and there are some stories which are not recorded about the house, and so when people come and work in the whare, I say to them, listen, listen to the whare, and it will tell you the stories. If there's something that catches your eye and it reminds you of something, let us know, let's work out what the whare is trying to tell us. Uh, because we know that the whare nui holds the whakapapa, all the stories of our people, but it's also a place that holds everything we need for moving forward. So generally, we're taking off uh, a, f a couple of decades worth of dust and dirt that's been ingrained. Uh, it's, the house has got lots of natural ven ventilation. Uh, so when we're coming in, we're not trying to make these. You can see these would have been beautiful white when they were first done, but 88 years later, they've uh, some of that dust and dirt has soaked in. Uh, we just want to make sure she's, they're clean and that we get that 20 odd years, 30 years worth of uh, dust and grime off and to ensure its future. What's happening here is we have to make a decision. Once we take a tukutuku panel off the wall, uh, how much of it we're going to reweave, how much needs we can just repair as it is. And so we've decided that because this is very, very damaged. We're going to remove the entire bottom section and then we will reweave it. But these tiny little ones that are up here, we'll leave the rest as it is and we'll just fill these in. The trickiness, of course, is matching the uh, colour. Much of this was done originally, dyed traditionally with paru, uh, and we want to make sure we use a, a stronger dye but also if we did it natural black then it would be gleaming and a, a huge contrast so we want to always make sure we try and colour match not use full concentrations and make sure it connects up so it doesn't stand out it just goes back to looking its normal beautiful self